Hi everyone, this is Scott McLeod with another episode of the Coronavirus Chronicles. I am delighted to have with me today Dan McDowell. He is the Director of Learning Innovation for the Grossmont Union High School District in California. Uh, Dan, let's dive right in. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the district and uh, the students and families that you serve. Great. Thanks for, thanks for having me. It's been great to, to follow along and now get to contribute. So uh, we are the Grossmont Union High School District. We're in the suburbs just east of San Diego. Uh, so we, we butt up right next to uh, the city of San Diego. And uh, we have 16,500 high school students. So we're a high school only district and we work with seven or eight feeder districts that, that send students our way. Uh, we have about a 60% uh, free and reduced lunch rate in our district, which has uh, increased pretty significantly over the last 15 years. And uh, you know we have the challenges of of, uh, of any big uh, schools, any 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 district with big schools, high schools of, of thousands of kids in one place, and and now trying to adapt to them not being in one place. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about how the district is responding during the pandemic. What's so, the uh, look like? You know how you take okay. care of kids and families. Yep, yep. So, so we closed like a lot of uh, schools in, in California um, on, and I think across the country really on March 13th uh, on, on really no notice. So we've been sort of talking about it and then the buzz was going and then Los Angeles Unified and San Diego Unified decided Thursday evening that they were going to close maybe even Friday morning. Uh, and, and by 11 o'clock we were, we were closing. So some of our teachers actually didn't even get to say goodbye to their kids. It, was just because you know the announcement didn't go out until late morning, uh, which is which is uh, which is definitely definitely a bummer because I don't know that we thought we'd be out this long. Right. We then sort of hit pause on instruction uh, really until this week, and I'll get I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, and and we immediately ramped up our food distribution uh, and made sure that we were able to get food out. And by that Monday, we were starting to to do drop offs. Uh, where families could come up, and uh, the number I heard just a few days ago was 16,000 uh, meals served. And remember, we have 16,500 students, right. and and our feeder and our feeder schools uh, are also doing meal distribution. So we are we are certainly helping the community, uh, probably broader than than even just our students. Right. Um, immediately, our special education teachers, uh, our special education department worked with. Uh, uh, our special education teachers and our teachers association to, to start um, making phone calls and checking in on, on those families. Uh, we worked on a MOU with our teachers association to kind of redefine the work uh, as we're moving forward. And, uh, and we also continued all our student support services that were in place. So our, our counseling, you know, departments uh, were continuing to refer students to, uh, uh, to other um, you know, to, to the services that we offer on campus, but now remotely. So we really wanted to make sure that, that kids were taken care of. Um, during that time, we started to build our distance learning plan and, and really kind of the, the first basic part of that was, uh, this isn't business as usual. Uh, we need to take care of ourselves as staff. We need to take care of our students. Uh, we need to, uh, you know, my favorite words have been grace and flexibility. <laughs> uh, and, and if you were to do a word cloud of, of, of everything I've said and written in the last five weeks, it's going to have grace and flexibility, no doubt, as the biggest words. Maybe distance learning as the biggest words, but those two, those two right, right there. And, and wanting to scale back workloads uh, and understand that even in an AP class, we don't know what's going on at home. So we have to recognize that there are some people who might be sitting in beautiful you know, single family dwellings, you know, with a room to themselves and robust internets and, and others that, that might not be, you know, uh, and for sure not be. We, 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 know, we know this about our students. So it's not even speculation is we have students who are not in ideal learning environments. So, so as we started to plan, uh, we, we were keeping that in mind. So we had sort of a two week pause mm -hmm. and then we had a two week spring break. Oh, okay. So, so it, yeah, so, so that didn't, ha you know, we're, we're, you know, we didn't really start until Monday. So it was five weeks after we closed, but that two week spring break really, uh, you know, really, really just kind of uh, set us back or, or just gave us more time to breathe. Uh, and then last week, week of April 13th, we did a, a whole series of professional learning. So we had, uh, I think, 30 to 40 offerings uh, and, and certain, we had, um, 2,200 people attend 
uh, and, and well, 2,200 seats filled over those five days. So some people may have gone every single thing. Some people just, you know, checked in to, to do uh, what they needed to do. Now, the bigger context is we were, we've been a one-to-one -one district for six years. So okay. we have Chromebooks. Uh, and so, and so our kids, our kids have access to technology at home. Uh, a lot of kids had broken Chromebooks, a few hundred actually. And so we had a, a Chromebook exchange, you know, kids drove up, uh, and, and rolled down their window and they put their, their Chromebook and, and charger in a, in a box. Uh, that box was, uh, you know, then they took the box back, they drove up and then they got a new Chromebook and charger and we were taking all the safety precautions. So, so, you know, staff has been. Uh, you know, we've had some people on the front lines doing amazing work and, and we're making sure to keep, keep them safe as well. Uh, and then we, we've been working with uh, identifying families without internet uh, at home because there are some that, that don't have an internet at home and two, our two major providers in the, uh, the county of San Diego, um, actually all three, there's three major providers, but in our part of the county uh, are, offering, are offering free internet through May uh, if you qualify for a free and reduced lunch. So we've been connecting families with, with those, with that uh, information. Uh, we just secured some hotspots yesterday. So, uh, so we'll be identifying uh, uh, it's maybe some families, in, you know, especially if you're homeless and foster youth who don't have, uh, who don't have internet. And on top of that, we've been creating offline packets. Okay. And, and that is our, that is, you know, uh, not our ideal state, but, but we will continue the educational program for, for people no matter what. So Dan, it's interesting that you were a one-to-one -one district for a while and yet you still had some students that were still struggling with internet access. So how was that navigated before the pandemic? So we, we, set, uh, we set some clear guidelines for teachers that uh, as far as what they could expect kids to do at home. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and our teachers, you know, as far as, you know, I was the ed tech, ed tech director before moving into this position, which is more over all professional learning and instruction. Uh, and, and we really, we really felt that teachers were, were adhering to that. Uh, and, and also, you know, I live in the community, I would, you know, while my daughter was at soccer practice, I'd go into a Starbucks and there were kids from our schools sitting on their Chromebooks in Starbucks. So kids found, kids found ways. Um, and we have been pushing kids and families towards those, those reduced rate uh, packages for, you know, for actually six years since we went one-to-one. -one. Uh, and, and we just never, we never got to the hotspot because there was never really a, a right. no school ever said this is a need. And, and we do some, some informal data collection um, through, through the company, a company called Bright Bites where kids self-report internet access. And we, it was pretty, it was pretty high at every, at every school uh, in the, in the, you know, our, our, lowest socioeconomic schools were still in the 90s. Yep. And so, um, so, you know, we never really, there were not any uh, reasons to push us for getting hotspots. Now, that being said, as we move forward, you know, who knows what, what the fall will look like and, and we may be, you know, exploring and expanding that a little bit at this point. Yeah, you know, it's an interesting tension. You had a really solid foundation, so it feels like you just had to fill in a few access gaps here and there, whereas another system, which maybe hadn't had that long run-up around one-to-one -one and access and teacher usage of the devices is gonna have a tougher haul right now, right? Right, and, and I have gotten a lot of feedback from our teachers saying, thank goodness we did, we went one-to-one -one when we did, you know? And, and, and we do have a, we'll call it an opt-in sort of PD model for, for the most case, for, for most things, technology being one of those. And there are a handful of teachers who are struggling right now because they opted out, you know, they were more traditional teachers and everything kind of happening within their classroom and the four walls of, of their classroom. And, and they've, you know, we've had uh, our, our, our beginner uh, Google uh, classroom sessions were, were full of those people who just needed like, oh my gosh, how do I get stuff to get <laughs> right. and then get it back and, and, uh, but, but not as many from, you know, some friends I have in other districts who, uh, who they've never used Google Classroom, anybody, and, you know, or I can't imagine uh, LA Unified trying to get everybody on Schoology in, uh, <laughs> in two weeks, you know, uh, that, that's, uh, those are some, some major hurdles, I'm sure. So, so we've been very fortunate to, to have had that supported in our district, uh, and, and a robust PD program going up back six years as well, so it's not like we handed them out, we've been, we've been doing lots of, uh, lots of promotion and, and building and growing over the last six years. Awesome. So what are some 
uh, decisions that the leadership team in the district has made that you think have been very productive that have really paid off for you all during the last you know few weeks? Well, I think I think uh, really reminding people it's about people, you know, and and both both students as people and staff as people. Uh, we had to you know really had to talk through a lot of the the you know the, or emphasize that we don't want to go back to our regular practices of of kind of overwhelming kids and because they don't have that daily you know that daily connection with you where you can look in their eyes and ask them, did you do your work? you know, and, and did you do this? Do you understand this? And, and it's just not going to be the same. And, you know, and we did by Zoom. So we have Zoom for everybody. We also have access to Google Meet. Uh, so, so there is that, but actually, you know, low end Chromebooks don't do great in video conferencing. So teachers are discovering this week that actually maybe whole class Zooms isn't the, isn't the, the way to go. And, and to address those particular things, our distance learning plan right away was asynchronous. It was not going to be live. You could hold office hours, you could meet with kids, you could tutor kids, you could do all that, but we were not going to have this expectation of a teacher getting 40 or maybe three sections of kids together, so 120, <laughs> our class sizes Our class sizes are 37, 38 okay. um, for, for a lot of our classes, and that just wasn't going to, you know, wasn't going to be feasible, and I've taught online enough at, at at the graduate level to know the struggles and let alone sophomores, right? All right. Uh, so it's going to be asynchronous. And then the other big decision I think that, that we made, which was, I think is, is going to pay off is, is we've created a staggered schedule. So English teachers um, uh, give assignments on Mondays and they're due Thursdays. Okay. Math teachers give assignments on Tuesdays and they're due Friday. Okay. And then so on. And then electives are on Friday and, and they're due, they're due the next Wednesday. So, you know, my fear, and I have a, I have a high schooler myself, my fear was they were going to wake up on Monday and have 50 assignments right. uh, or, or even 20, right? Uh, and, with, and not know where to start. So this way they can kind of focus on it. We have like a block the day after the, the assignments are assigned. So like Tuesday morning for English teachers uh, was reserved for office hours. So in Zoom, Google Meet, however a teacher wanted to do it. Okay. Uh, and then they could they could then connect with kids and see what kids needed. And then the afternoons are available for anyone. So so as long as they're not stepping on each other's toes and we're letting schools figure that out if, if that's a problem. So um, so so we we've created you know I can feel like we've created a, a box big enough for everyone to bounce around with without anybody being overwhelmed yeah. uh, with with work and teachers as well. Because teachers, sometimes we do it to themselves. I mean, I'm, I'm an 18-year uh, teaching veteran um, out of the classroom now seven years. But, man, sometimes I, I did it to myself, overworked myself when, it, you know, in retrospect, I could, have, I could have scaled it back a little bit. And so this is helping, you know, I think helping protect teachers and students. And every teacher has a prep day once a week. Or they're, they have no need to interact with kids on that day unless they want to. Right. Oh, cool. Great. Um, so that was awesome. Thank you. There's lots of good stuff that you just articulated. What do you think some of the challenges are sort of now and looking forward? I, I would say our biggest challenge is, uh, is grading. So high school is driven by points, whether we love that or hate that. Um, and so, and so we've had a lot of deep discussions on what grade should look like. We have not made a decision. We're, you know, we're leaning the, the state of California and San Diego County Office of Education have really kind of pushed to this hold harmless. Don't let kids go down below March the 13th. And, and that's really where we are. It's just a matter of, uh, do we allow letter grades to continue? Uh, um, and kids raise their grades, or do we do, do a credit no mark, uh, um, you know, uh, method as well. And both, ha both have their merits. Um, we, we really, you know, uh, our AP teachers and, you know, are really pushing for grades because kids have earned those grades. But, but what would they, you know, sometimes what we don't see is the bigger picture of we're trying to, we're trying to protect all students. We're trying to protect those that kids who's in a two bedroom apartment and doesn't have a, with 10 people and doesn't have a quiet space to do their work, you know, while also wanting to reward kids for doing the work that they have, you know, that they, they have been doing and, and recognizing as we look around that we're in a global pandemic and we haven't left the house for five weeks. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's interesting. Uh, at my university, what we have been told is go ahead and submit our grades as usual, and then the student gets to decide afterward if they want the pass fail option. Right. So they and and that that that's potentially on the table as well. Sort of a blend of 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 that. Um, 
So, so we, you know, a lot of districts around us have, have already decided that and teachers are antsy about that, but we, we just felt like we want to, we want to see what happens. So yep. th- we want to measure our engagement this week and, and see who shows up, who doesn't show up, who's doing the work, who's not doing the work. And that will give us a little bit of a, a more informed uh, decision. Plus our board has to approve anything and they don't, they're meeting, <laughs> they're meeting, they're meeting Thursday. Uh, I don't even know that they'll come to a decision on that uh, this week, but uh uh, they will be, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we just, you know, maybe we're being cautious, but we're, I think we're being cautious for the, the right reasons. Yeah. And, and whatever, whatever we do, it will be really driven by equity and the idea of making sure we're serving all our students, not just our high, high performing students whose parents yell the loudest. No, absolutely. So we're kind of at the end of our time here. Anything else you want to share? Uh, no, you know, grace and flexibility, you know, and, 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 and I think that goes all the way around, uh, you know, uh, teachers towards their students, students towards their teachers, parents towards the school community, and we got to throw our administrators in there as well. I mean, uh, our, our site admins, our VPs and, and principals have been on their sites every day for five weeks. We canceled our spring break plans. You know, our district office has been running at full force. You know, our classified staff, our food service workers have been have been rising to the occasion and, and doing amazing stuff. Our tech department hasn't shut down. Everything, every you know, there's there's all these things. Even though the education sort of shut down for like three weeks, the machine has still been moving behind. And we have to recognize those efforts and then come back to that grace and flexibility as far as what happens uh, with kids. Uh, you know, and teachers in their new virtual environments, knowing it's not going to be perfect. And, and we, we always, in the ed tech world, we always talk about risk, right? Lean, it takes, take these risks. And, and now people are being forced to do that because sometimes people didn't maybe necessarily in the past. Now you're being forced to do that, do that and, and be okay with it. Reflect, change what happens tomorrow. If it didn't work out right, if it worked out great, do it again. Right. So uh, grace and flexibility. Dan, that's great stuff. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me.